Today, the pleasure lady is going to sit there and show you just how easy it is to make peach preserves from canned peaches. So, let's get started. So, go ahead, grab that vine, because I'm going to be swinging it your way. And swing on into my kitchen, and we're going to get cooking. Good looking. Well, good day, YouTubers. Today... I'm going to take you along on a series that I'm going to be doing, and it's also going to be doing it on the number 10 cans that you can find at Walmart, Sam's Club, Costco, whatever. But they're very large industrial size cans. Uh, this one's 108 ounce or 6.6 pounds of sliced peaches. I'll put it back in the view so you can see the can. You're going to need one of these and the other thing you're going to be needing is two cups of sugar. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to open up our sliced peaches and we're going to be making it in my ball Fresh Tech Automatic Jam and Jelly Maker. But if you don't have one of these, go ahead and put it on the stove. It's perfectly fine. You don't have to have a jam and jelly maker. I'm just one of the fortunate ones that do have one. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to open up my can of peaches. And we're going to pour it right into the jam and jelly maker. Juice and all. Alrighty, now I have the can of sliced peaches open. I grabbed a ladle because I do not want to make a mess. Even though I say I don't want to make a mess. I do end up making a mess. And somehow if I sit there and set out trying not to make a mess, it always seems to be a bigger mess that one does make. So, I'm just going to continue ladling these peaches and the juice all into my jelly maker. If you don't have a jelly maker, you would be ladling it into like a Dutch oven or some type of large you know, pan that you have that would accommodate this whole can of peaches and the juice and all and I think I'm down enough let me just set this over here now let's just pour the rest of this all in Now, let's go ahead, come down here, push the jelly button, and push enter. And at the same time, we can go ahead and add the two cups of sugar. Because basically what we're going to be doing now, from this point on, is we're going to allow this to cook down at least one-third to one-fourth of the original volume. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to allow this to work its little magic and we'll come back. All right, the jam and jelly maker is going to be sounding off anytime soon. And I just want to sit there and show you what it looks like at this point. Now, I'm going to have to go ahead and go through a cool down period. But if you're doing this by Dutch oven on the stove, continue cooking it over the you know low slow flame, stirring it periodically as you were. 
But for me and the jelly maker, I have to go through a cool off period. As soon as my cool off period is done, I will be running this through another cycle. And there it went off and now it's going to go in the cool off period. As soon as it's all done, we'll be back. Okay, as you see, my jam and jelly maker has cooled off. We're going to come down here, push the jelly button, and this time we're going to increase it to 30 minutes. Put the cover on, and let's go ahead and let's start it. Push enter. And I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but you're going to sit there and we're going to be cooking this for about an hour to an hour and a half, maybe two hours. Remember, we're reducing this. We're making a preserve. So it's going to take a couple runs on the jam and jelly maker or take you one to two hours on the stove top. Okay, I zoomed in this time so you can sit there and have a little close-up view of the inside of the jam and jelly maker. And I wish you could just smell it over here. It just smells so divine. But it's going to be sounding off and then it's going to have to go down another cool down period. But if you are doing yours on the stove, continue to cook it until it goes down one-third to one-fourth of its uh, original measurement. And there it went off. So, like I said, I have to wait for a cool-off period, and I'm going to be running it again on another cycle, on the jelly cycle, for 30 minutes. Let's be jamming again. Push that jelly button. Increase it to 30. Push the enter button. And you know the procedure. I feel like we're doing the Henry VIII song again. Second verse, same as the first. <laughs> Anyways, with all the silliness aside, we're going to allow this to go through another jelly session. And then I might be taking my immersion blender to it and purring up the peaches that are all in there and probably be running it through one more jelly session. We'll see you at the end of this jelly session and see if we have to sit there and do another jelly session after I take the immersion blender to it. I just wanted to show you the beauty of this jam and jelly maker. I mean, it's doing all the work for you. Like, I like to call it, it's working its little magic. I mean, set it and forget it. Jam and jellies could not be any easier. Now that would be telling me to put sugar in if I was doing a regular jam and jelly recipe. So we just ignore that. I want to show you how it's reducing really nice. And it's going to be sounding off at any time. And like I told you, I'm going to take my immersion blender while it's in its cool off period. And I'm going to blend up the peaches that are in here. Also, I want you to get your hot water bath canner going. So with all that being said, 
I'm gonna go and grab my immersion blender and as soon as this sounds off we're gonna sit there and take the immersion blender and blend this all up ah, and there it goes off so I'll show you after I blended this mixture all up of what it should look like and before I take my immersion blender I just wanted to sit there and make a special note to you all who may have the jam and jelly maker or who may be thinking of getting jam and jelly maker please remove your stirring arm I should back out so you can see it But yes, remove the stirring arm before you take your immersion blender to it. Okay, I pureed it all up with my immersion blender. And that's how you want it to look. So I'm going to let this go ahead and go on its cool off period and put the stir arm back all on and we're going to continue to cook it down I believe for one more jelly session so I'll see you after this is on after it's cool off session okay it went through the cool off period I have to put my stirring arm back on and we're going to set it for the final time on the jelly setting. Increase it to 30 minutes. Go and push enter. Let your jam and jelly maker do its little magic. I have my hot water bath canner going on the stove. I have my jars in my dishwasher washing and getting all sterilized and clean and in 30 minutes it'll be time for us to put this all into canning jars and then we're going to can them the jam and jelly maker sounded off let's go ahead and remove the cover and Let's go ahead and start ladling it into our canning jars. You're going to want to leave one fourth inch head space. Okay, let's go ahead and remove our funnel. Dip our paper toweling. And I dip mine, oops. I have a little bowl back here, but I have some vinegar in. And that's what I always use to wipe the rims of my canning jars. Now, I have some lids in hot water. Go ahead, let's add that. Finger tighten. Oops, for, wait. We forgot one thing. I always do this right away every time I go back into canning of the jams and jellies. 
You're going to want to sit there and just debubble. Now let's go ahead and wipe the rim of our jar. Let's get another lid out. Grab another ring. You're gonna, ouch. You're gonna wanna finger tighten it. And remember, leave one fourth inch headspace. I don't know if I told you that. And now we can go ahead Get our jar lifter, and we're going to put this into a hot water bath canner, and we're going to process it for 10 minutes. You start your processing time of 10 minutes after you brought it all back up to a boil. It's very important. You have to bring your water back up in your hot water bath canner back up to a boil then you start your processing time so let's go ahead and fill up another jar we're going to leave one fourth inch head space We can add just a tad more. Grab our debubbler. Dip our paper toweling into more vinegar solution. Wipe the rim of our canning jar. Grab a hot canning lid. Oh, come on. Oh, I got two of them. I only need one of yes. <laughs> They're both coming. Grab another canning ring, finger tighten that on, and let's go ahead and place that one into the hot water bath canner as well. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to finish up. Okay, I'm going to sit there and bring the water back up to a boil in my hot water bath canner and we're going to process the peach preserves for 10 minutes and then after the 10 minutes is up we're going to turn off the burner and then we're going to allow the peach preserves to sit in there for 5 minutes before we remove them and then you're going to want to remove them and place them on I like to put them on a towel and leave them undisturbed for 24 hours. Okay, I took them out of the hot water bath canner. We allowed them to cool. We took the rings off. We washed the jars and the lids all up, and now we're going to store them in our pantry without the rings. 
because that's what they suggest. And this is how easy it was to make peach preserves of canned peaches. Who would have thought that it was this easy? And really, folks, it was cheap because I got four pint or four and a half pints out of it. So that's pretty goddamn good out of one can. And I can't remember the price that I paid for the peaches. Otherwise, I would give you a price, but I don't know offhand. All I do know is that it was very economical to make peach preserves. Now, if you like what you saw here today, please go down, give me a like, go up there, hit the subscribe button, tap that little bell. That way you always be notified every time the Pleasure Lady here puts out a new video. But most of all, thank you for stopping by and taking the time to watch my video. Y'all come back now, you hear?